Converting an EL1 to RAW or a RAW to EL1 is pretty easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick in Linux um, as well as in Windows. So there's a couple different ways we can do that. Let's walk through it. So there's a couple of tools that I'm going to use to do this. The first one is EWF export. I'm also going to use DC3DD. You can use DD or any other variant of that. And I'm also going to use EWF acquire stream. So I'll show you how those work and how to actually use them. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you real quick what I've got. I've got my EO1 here and we'll go ahead and take a look at that. You see that that actually runs. We'll run file against it. Why not? You can see that it's in EWF format. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a directory for my raw output. EWF export dash U for unattended. So I don't have to enter any information. It's just going to automatically uh, start processing. Uh, show, point it to my EO1. Give it a target. So this is the destination. And I want to put that in raw output. And then I'm going to name it converted.dd and hit go. At this point, it's just going to convert the EO1 into raw data. And we'll go ahead and verify that once it's done. And now that it's done, we can see that we've got our MD5 hash. You can see we got that file there. We'll do uh, MLS over that. Should be exactly the same, which looks like it is. We'll run file against the output there. You can see that that is actually just raw data. We'll run hex dump against that and just look at the raw data so we can see our partition table there. So that is good. And then just for comparison's sake, we'll take a look at the EO1 that we started with. And we can see that it is in the EO1 format. Now, to convert it back, um, it's pretty easy to do as well. We're going to use uh, DC3DD and pipe that into EWF Acquire Stream and output that as a new EO1. So I'm going to make a directory new EO1. And then I am basically just going to use DC3DD to read that raw input file, pipe that into EWF Acquire Stream. Uh, give it the dash T for target, so the destination, which is going to be the new folder that we just created, and then we're just going to call it new EO1. We're not going to give it an extension because EWF Acquire Stream will automatically go through and it breaks it out into ind individual files and it will give the extension as it outputs. And then we're going to hit go. DC3DD is reading the raw file that we just created and piping it into EWF Acquire Stream, and EWF Acquire Stream is creating an EO1 of the data that it's seen. Okay, great. And now that that's done, we can see that we've got our MD5 hash, which matches uh, the previous MD5 hash that we had. And just for fun, we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, EO1 that we created. So LS new EO1. Okay, we've got that in there. We'll run MMLS against that. We can see that it's exactly the same. We'll run file against that. And just for comparison, we'll run file against our original EO1, and we will run file against the raw, just for fun, just for comparison. And we'll do hex dump against that new file. We can see that we've got the EO1 header there. So now let's run verification against all of these and check the MD5s to make sure that everything's exactly the same. To do that, I'm going to use EWF verify against the EO1s and then just run MD5 deep against the raw file. And what EWF verify will do is basically run through that EO1 and it's going to match the hash that it creates against the hash that the EO1 has stored. Um, internally in its data set. And we can see here that those hashes match exactly. So that's great. And this was our original EO1. So this is kind of our starting point. Now we'll run this against the EO1 that we just created. And now that that's done, we can see that those hashes match up starting with 5F9 and ending in AC3. 5F9 ending in AC3 and everything else. 88E45. Everything else looks like it matched, so that's great. Now let's run MD5 deep. Sorry, MD5 sum against our raw file that we created, and we should get an MD5 that matches the ones that we just got from EWF Verify. And it looks like that finished up, and we can now go ahead and check that. It starts with 5F9, 9 ending in AC3, AC3. 
So it looks like that worked as well. So that's a quick and easy way to convert uh, EO1 to RAW and then RAW to EO1 if you need that. And just for fun, let's, I'm just curious to see what happens if we cat the RAW file rather than using DD into EWF Acquire Stream and see if we get the same results. So we've kicked that off, let's see what we get. Okay, it finished up and I think we can see from that MD5 hash that it's an exact match, so that's cool. If you wanna convert an EO1 to a different type of EO1 structure, so like uh, FTK or a different end case format, uh, you can do that with EWF export. If you don't use the dash U option, it will prompt you with the type of format that you want. So by default, if you run it with dash U, it's going to just output as raw data. But if you want to convert it to a different type of EWF format, you can do that. What we're gonna do here is EWF export our EO1 uh, with the target of raw output, and we're just gonna call it new format. We're not gonna give it an extension because uh, it will automatically give it an extension. Now it's gonna prompt us, prompt us for our format. Let's go ahead and do the FTK variant. Uh, compression method, we'll just hit enter for that. Compression level, we'll do empty block. I've found that one to actually be the fastest. Probably depends on the data set. Uh, segment size, just what size of chunks do you want it to be exported out as? One and a half gigs is fine. Number of sectors, uh, we'll go 4096. Start at zero all of them so just hit enter all the way down and it will go ahead and do the conversion and we'll see what we get now that that's finished we can see that the md5 is exactly the same so that's cool let's go ahead and take a look at the image that we just created so ls raw output we've got our new format eo1 there and let's just do ewf info on that so we can see here that it is file format as ftk versus Our starting point, which was NK6, we can see that the MD5 sum is exactly the same. And uh, we successfully converted that EO1 to a different type of EO1. Converting an EO1 into a raw file in Windows is pretty easy. We're gonna use a tool called FTK Imager. What we're gonna do is open the program up, come to File, Create Disk Image, and then we're gonna select Image File as our source because we wanna do the conversion and we're gonna to point to it. So I've got the exact same one I was doing in my Linux examples. We're gonna go ahead and select that, open that up. Yep, looks good. And then I'm going to hit add and I'm going to leave it as raw DD. So that'll do the conversion there. I'm not gonna enter anything in there. Browse, make a new folder. We'll call this raw version. Hit okay. Call it new raw file. I forgot to mention this. If you drop this file fragment size down to zero, then it will output as one raw file rather than multiple segments. And we'll go ahead and hit finish. At this point, I'm not gonna run any verification against that. And we'll go ahead and hit start. Now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and verify with image summary, just make sure that the hash matches, starting with 5F9, ending in AC3. Yeah, looks good, looks like it worked. Let's go ahead and throw it into Linux. Let's go ahead and run the file command against these and just verify that they are actually raw files. So, yep, looks like uh, DOS MBR boot sector, what we're getting there. Let's run hex dump against it. And we can see, yep, our partition table, NTFS. So it looks good. That's how you convert an EO1 into RAW on Windows using FTK Imager.